Hello, Bobby Torres of Box According here to share with you my master bus chain for achieving controlled, punchy, and loud mixes. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm gonna get right to it and play the audio sample, and then I'm gonna break down every single process that's happening on my master bus uh, that delivers the result that you hear in the sample. So let's check it out. Okay, so that sample was by my good friends in a band called At Rest. I will leave a link to their music within the video's description. Okay, so for me, it's all about a loud mix that's nice and transparent. I don't want my mix sounding over compressed or squashed or overly distorted or unnatural in any way. I like a nice open sounding mix. The problem is it's hard to get your mix loud and punchy without it sounding compressed if you don't know what to do. So what I mean by this is people generally will take a compressor and just compress the living crap out of their two bus. Or they'll just take a brick wall limiter and just lop off a bunch of transi in it. Now let's say you take your mix and you stick it through a master bus compressor and you know you, you compress it by 10 dB or something like that. You're gonna end up with a mix that sounds over compressed. Uh, or let's say you take a limiter and you lop off a bunch of transi and your snare drum disappears or your kick drum will end up disappearing because the process is just too extreme. For me, the trick is to use a bunch of processes on my two bus, uh, but each one is doing very little. And the net effect is that you end up with a nice transparent and loud mix that's almost mastered in a way. Let's put it this way, it makes mastering extremely simple because your mix is 90% of the way there. Um, so, okay, so the first thing in my chain I always like to have is my master bus compressor. So in this case, I'm using the SSL bus compressor. Um, with a pretty slow attack, and I use auto-release, the auto-release function. For me, the auto-release is super transparent. That's why I generally gravitate towards the SSL bus compressor. I just love this auto-release function. For me, I just really can't live without this auto-release. I'm just a huge fan of it. Now, every once in a while, I want a compressor that actually pumps. I want the characteristic of the compressor pumping on my two bus. In that case, I'll go for an API or just some other uh, bus compressor. But if I want transparent results, my favorite is the SSL bus compressor. Um, and a very low ratio, just a two to one ratio. So um, I'm gonna play the track and I'm gonna show you how much compression is actually happening within my bus compressor. So um, let's check it out. Let's take a look at the gain reduction meter here. Let's check it out. Yeah, so as you can see, it's sitting at about uh, 2 dB of gain reduction, which is not a lot. It's a nice consistent uh, 2 dB of gain reduction. Every once in a while, if like there's a floor time happening or you know a sub drop hits, it might go to negative three or maybe even at most 4 dB of gain reduction. But for the most part, for me, the sweet spot is 2 dB on my master bus compressor. Now, do not become obsessed with the numbers that I'm giving you. This is just my personal preference. There are engineers out there that you know they have 4 dB of gain reduction. I've even seen guys go up to 8 dB of gain reduction. Uh, and the results are great. For me, I like my mixes sounding nice and open. I'm not a huge fan of overcompressed sounding mixes, so I like to stick with around 2 dB. That's just personal preference. Give it a shot. If you like it, stick with it. But uh, okay, so after my bus compressor, I have another processor. Let's see what I have here. Okay, so this is the PSP Vintage Warmer 2. I've been using this forever. What it is, is a tape emulator. It's pretty much a tape saturator. Um, but it almost acts sort of like a clipper as well, slash limiter. So I have it right after my uh, master bus compressor just to add some extra analog warmth to my mix. It adds some nice saturation. Uh, so I'm gonna play the sample back and let's see how much gain reduction is happening within this process. Let's check it out. Okay, so if you were paying attention to the gain reduction meter, maybe about half a dB to one dB at most of gain reduction. So let's keep this in mind. My master bus compressor, the SSL, is doing about two dB of gain reduction, and this process is doing about half a dB to one dB. So right now I have about 
two and a half to three dB of gain reduction. So each process is doing very little. Now for me, the tape saturator is doing more than just controlling transients. It's also adding some analog color, uh, a little bit of harmonic uh, excitement. Now every tape saturator has its own sound. Sometimes I'll use the Crane Song Phoenix. Other times I might use the uh, Kramer Tape by Waves. But I tend to really lean back on my Vintage Warmer 2, uh, mainly because I know it really well. I know the sweet spot, again, for me, is around half a dB of one dB of gain reduction. Uh, and I get great results with it, and I love this plugin. So you do not have to have this plugin to achieve these results. The idea is that I have some form of saturator that's also doing some gain reduction after my Master Bus compressor. Okay, so after my uh, tape saturator, I have super simple the classic C4. Um, some people that have looked at my master bus chain will say, hey, why don't you use the C6? Why aren't you using the, you know, the ozone multiband compressor? To be honest with you, I just love the sound of the C4 on my master bus compressor. I find it to be very transparent as well. Uh, whenever there's game reduction happening, as long as I don't let it get out of control, it's just very uh, transparent and uh, I like it. Okay, so let's see what this multiband compressor is doing to my mix when I play the mix back. Let's check it out. Okay, so I have four frequency bands happening. I have everything up to around 90 hertz happening in the low end. Uh, then I have this huge chunk of mid range, everything from about 100 hertz to about 4K. Uh, then a little bit of range here from 4K to about 11K, 10K. Uh, and then the air above that, everything above 10K has its own band. If you're paying close attention, it was really only catching the peaks and there wasn't much happening beyond two to three dB of gain reduction. Now I choose to use a multiband compressor instead of a second broadband compressor uh, for two reasons. One, I'm only catching the peaks and also the multiband compressor is by nature more transparent because each of the bands are compressing independent of one another. So you don't really notice the compression as much. Um, I have in the past used a second SSL compressor or maybe even like a second type of two bus compressor, just a broadband compressor. Uh, and I tend to like the results of the C4. The C4 is just very transparent. And again, it's not doing much. It's only catching the peaks uh, at this stage in my uh, plugin chain. So. That's it. It's there just for a little extra transparent control. So let's backtrack for a second. My uh, two bus compressor, my SSL is doing about two dB of constant gain reduction. Uh, the PSP Vintage Warmer is doing about half a dB to one dB of gain reduction. So three dB, give or take. And this guy here is doing about two to three B, just catching the peaks of gain reduction. So in total, you're looking at about five dB of gain reduction happening. Now, if you notice, the mix still sounds natural, still sounds nice and open because each of these processes is doing very little and they stack up to create a nice natural sounding result. Um, that's one of the reasons why people actually like analog equipment. When you record with you know, a tape machine going through a board, you patch in some outboard gear. Each of these processes kind of imparts a nice pleasing character on all of the tracks. And then once you bounce tracks in the analog domain to like, you know, a stereo pair on the console and, and you just keep adding more and more processes, the net effect is this pleasing analog warmth that accumulate throughout the signal chain. And this is no different. It's the same concept, uh, except I'm doing it with plugins on this particular stage in my mix. So yes, so that's where we're at so far. Okay, so after my C4 uh, multiband compressor, I have a simple stock Pro Tools EQ. Um, I do not become obsessed with which plugin EQ I'm using. You know, this is just a generic EQ that does nothing more than boost and cut frequencies. It does not add any character. It's just a digital EQ. And I want a digital EQ here. I don't want to add any more character uh, without doing it intentionally. So for me, the stock Pro Tools EQ gets the job done just fine. Uh, and in this case, I just have one dB pulled out at around 58 hertz, 60 hertz, a little bit, half a dB pulled out at around 130 hertz, and just a tad of 3K pulled out about half a dB. Um, but I like having my EQ at this stage in the game, because if you look here, I have some meters. So I'm gonna play the track back and I want you to take a good look at the meter within the EQ. Let's check it out. Okay, so as you can see, the mix is sitting at around negative 16, negative 20 uh, dB. 
I like to use these meters to always reference that range. That's kind of like my range that I'm aiming for because that's roughly around zero dB analog. Um, it does not matter where your mix sits as long as it's not clipping. I've just gotten into this habit. So all of my mixes, just to be consistent, I like to have peaking at around negative 16. So it is time for me to send my mix to, you know, the mastering engineer, or if I'm mastering the mix myself, I like to have my mixes consistent level wise. And I always shoot for around negative 16, negative 18 around there. There are peaks above that. It's not the end of the world. And if it's sitting a little lower, not the end of the world, but that's just my go-to level for my mixes. Okay. So after the EQ, I have my trusty L1. Super old plugin. I've been using this thing for, oh my God, 14, 15 years now, forever. Um, but here's the thing. Most people, when they have an L1 or an L2 or, or some form of limiter on their master bus, uh, they're doing some form of gain reduction, meaning it's doing something to the transients. The transients are being lopped off. Uh, something's happening to the signal. Uh, for me, nothing's happening to the signal other than boosting it and just some dither. So when I export the mix to send to the band before it's mastered, there's just some dithering happening. And also the mix is louder. It's louder than that negative 16 that you just saw because that negative 16 dB peak that you saw before was happening before my L1. The L1 is adding roughly 16 dB of gain to my mix. So if the L1 isn't doing anything to the peaks, my mix is super duper tight and controlled. And that's the goal with my master bus chain. I don't want peaks and crazy things happening I want everything to be nice and tight. So when it's time to master, I have to do very, very, very little. Or the mastering engineer has to do very little. I've sat in on sessions where the mastering engineer has done next to nothing uh, on my mixes. And that's always what I strive for. So, okay, so I'm going to play the track back and let's see what this L1 is doing, which it should be doing nothing. Let's check it out. Because if you notice, the attenuation only kicked in for a brief second, only when the sub drop hit and on that one floor top hit. But 99.9% .9 of the time, the L1 is doing no gain reduction, and that's always my goal. I always want my mix sitting nice and even without any limiting at all, aside from the uh, bus compression, the tape saturation, and that little bit of multiband compression. Okay, so the moral of the story, just to recap, is I like to control my mix, but in a musical way. I want my mix to be loud uh, and easy to master, but I don't want it sounding squashed and overly distorted, and just sounding like crap. I'm not a fan of over-processing. I like nice, organic, open-sounding productions. It's just personal preference. There are people out there that love compression. They love things sounding kind of artificial, and that's cool. My productions, I like a nice, natural sound. So if you're a fan of this kind of uh, production where it's heavy, it hits hard, but it also sounds pleasing to the ear, it sounds almost analog, uh, give this a shot. Try having a nice stack of plugins on your master bus chain with each process doing very little. Your mix will be controlled in a nice transparent way and do not become obsessed with the exact plugins. For me, it's about how you use the tools, not really the tools themselves. Yes, I do have some favorite plugins. I do love the SSL bus compressor. I do love the PSP vintage warmer, but again, I use other bus compressors as well. And I do use other tape saturators. So again, don't obsess over the exact plugins, just work on the technique itself. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And you can download my free quick EQ guide that contains all my EQ settings that I always return to when I start a mix. There's a link below within the video description. Till next time, happy mixing.